This is a production of the Hardway HQ Podcasting Network. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Unfiltered here at HardwayHQ.com via the Hardway HQ Podcasting Network. You can find this podcast through iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, iHeartRadio, the entire gamut of podcasting applications, as well as the aforementioned HardwayHQ.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok at HardwayHQ, Instagram at the Hardway HQs, if there's any other one. Advertising concerns, hate mail, John at HardwayHQ.com. That's J O N at, don't I try at? Use the A with the circles around it. Cool gimmick, cool shtick, cool deal, baby. John at HardwayHQ.com. I'm John Harder here in the beautiful, luxurious Hardway HQ studios. Uh, apologize for last week having no episode of Unfiltered. Um, I had the second dose of the vaccine, and it took me for a loop. I was in bed for a day and a half, two days. So I was not in any shape to record on Sunday, but we're going to do two days back-to-back to uh, finish up Nickelodeon 90s month uh, in the month of May. And today we're going to be talking about Nickelodeon Studios. And nothing embodies 90s Nickelodeon than Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida and Nickelodeon Studios. This place was the end-all, be-all at the end of the majority of probably every game show, every sitcom, every live-action show you would see on SNCC, and during the afternoons of uh, the weekend afternoons, and even, like, you know, you pick afternoon Nick in the afternoon, you always see, you know, always go to Universal Studios, where Nickelodeon Studios is, in Orlando, Florida. And you would see that at the end of the majority of a lot of Nickelodeon concepts. And for me, that was the pinnacle of Nickelodeon. We had to go there. And I didn't know exactly what the hell we were going to do when we got there, if I ever got there. But Nickelodeon Studios was a place I've always wanted to go. And I actually had the golden chance to do that um, back-to-back years in 1995 and 1996. Uh, my parents, when I was a baby, we used to go to Florida all the time. It was only strictly Disney World. But in 95 and in 96, my old man, Big Norm, Miss Monica, um, piled me and my middle brother to go to Florida. My baby brother wasn't born yet. 96, he was technically conceived, so he was there in spirit and probably in developing, but we were there, and I remember Universal Studios getting there in 95, we're walking through, and they were filming, they were doing tapings, and I believe one of the shows they were taping was Keenan and Kel, especially the first year, so they were taping that, and we're walking through just watching how they did things with Nickelodeon, and you know, if you, you go, you're outside of there, because... At Universal Studios, you hit a lot of things. You had the Hanna-Barbera section, which I miss to this day, and that Elvis, uh, not Elvis, Elroy Jetson ride where he was kidnapped by Dick Dastardly and that uh, the mutt uh, and had to go and rescue him. So, But all around the park, I mean, Nickelodeon Studios is this giant blue building with a Nickelodeon symbol up top, Nickelodeon Studios. I was like, wow. I was like mesmerized. And then realizing, you know, thinking it's this great place where like, people can converge and do all this fun stuff. Nickelodeon Studios wound up just being nothing more than just a place where they recorded shows. And up top, they had the editing stuff and all that jazz. So you walk around, you see 95, we saw, like I alluded to, uh, Ian and Nickel. And in 96, we saw them filling uh, Gullah Gullah Island, which was that Nick Jr. show back in the day. And uh, you even saw us bouncing around down in the, in the set. I guess someone about to film a segment, Binya Binya Pollywog. Binya Binya! <laughs> And we would walk around, and then in the end, they would do, like, live events for, just like the fans that came in, do, like, a live show. They would have, like, their, their Universal st- uh, Universal Studios, I guess, staff, and they would do, like, a like a Slime Time Live type thing. And my brother, Greg, was actually one of the combatants in 1996 to the point where he was actually part of the show. And at the end of the day, because he, he had his Nickelodeon shirt on, my mom made him wear it. You're gonna wear the Nickelodeon shirt, and, I, and, and if you get picked, you're gonna do it. And... <laughs> And they dumped uh, slime on him, and they pulled my brother. Uh, my middle brother was is such a a very unique individual, especially as a young man, a very unique kid. So when that happened, I don't. He's not big on the public eye, so when he had that happen to him, uh, <laughs> he was very embarrassed. But he had a good time, man. And and you know, overall, we went there twice, two years, and I never went back until 2002. And by then. Uh, Nickelodeon, we didn't even go to Universal. We went, we went everywhere else. I never had a chance to go back to Nickelodeon Studios. And 
by then, I mean, it was a wild time. I mean, it officially opened up on June 7th, 1990. I mean, they were filming Double Dare and Super Family Double Dare there, and they were doing certain things at Nickelodeon Studios, but they really weren't official until June 7th. Um, they had, on April 30th, uh, 1992, they actually, this is according to Wikipedia, and they're never wrong, they actually put a time capsule on the under the ground in Nickelodeon Studios. So people thought it was going to be there forever. I mean, this is I'm on Wikipedia now, and this is what was buried in this time capsule, which I think in 20 years they're going to come check it out, and these kids are going to go, what are CDs? Here's what they had. Uh, Bubblegum, skateboard, comic book, phone book, uh, VHS copies of Back to the Future and Home Alone. Definitely different photos of uh, bicycles, trains, cars, politicians, celebrities. A piece of the Berlin Wall, which I guarantee people, you know, kids will be like, why is this here? Uh, Berlin Wall, obviously. I'll be talking about freedom. Hasselhoff on the wall. Come on, man. Uh, for a Florida TV guide from the week of April 30th, 1992. A baseball, Barbie doll, a Nintendo Game Boy, Nick Toons t-shirt, Michael Jackson CDs. Mm, hindsight. <laughs> the history might be repeated because 93, we all know it really began. Uh, the negativity on Michael Jackson. That's not here nor there. Uh, Twinkies, an, Nickelo an issue of Nickelodeon Magazine. Proud subscriber. Uh, rollerblades, a can of Nickelodeon Gak, Reebok, Pump, Sneakers, which I never got, and I still have heat with Miss Monica for as a kid. I never got them. But this kid I went to school with, coincidentally also named John, J-O-N, got his. I got heat. And uh, a copy of the book Endangered Species. Never heard of that. But that capsule was buried, and when the when it closed, Nickelodeon Studios closed in 2005, which I'll get into in a moment, they took that time capsule and moved it to outside of the Nickelodeon Animation Studio in Burbank, California, and it's uh, it's in a it's in a five-story glass building, which I'm going to get into in a minute. Why Nickelodeon Studios doesn't exist anymore, and you know, but that was the place. I mean, everyone always wanted to go to Nickelodeon Studios, and you hear stuff like that, the craziness. And when it closed on April 30th, 2005, it wasn't because they just got rid of it to get rid of it. I mean, Nickelodeon was huge by the time 97, 98 happened, so they actually built they built two different uh, studios in California, an animation studio and another like, closed studio set in, in California. And they have offices in New York as well, in Midtown Manhattan. I don't know if it's going on now because of COVID. But with all that stuff going on, less and less emphasis was put on Nickelodeon Studios. And by the time, again, 2005 rolls around, I mean, you're doing nothing there. Uh, the, last, the last actual show that was filmed ever at Nickelodeon Studios was when it was post Nickelodeon Studios. Uh, they filmed My Family's Got Guts, which was a um, a, 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 uh, a spin-off of Guts and did a short little run there. And that was in that was in, you know, I think it was 2009. Um, you know, and just over the years Nickelodeon Studios has forgotten about, you know, our, obviously the generation of kids now don't even know what the hell the original Nickelodeon Studios in Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida was. Stuff of legend, man. I mean, it, it's another heartbreaking reminder of what happens, you know, when you're kids and little by little pieces of your childhood just wither away. Either they go defunct or they, they disappear. And this is another example. Like I told you, the time capsule, time capsule, a piece of time capsule in time. And, oh, man, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. And so many shows were filmed there. Obviously, Nickelodeon Guts. All the game shows like Family, uh, fam uh, Family Double Dare, Legends of the Freaking Hidden Temple, which I heard is coming back on CW. I heard a rumor about that. Not too sure. Double Dare 2000, <laughs> Slime Time Live, the actual show. <laughs> uh, Nick Arcade, which is a Nick Regatta favorite show, by the way, you would love. Uh, what would you do with Mark Summers, the other Mark Summers game show? Bobby the Brain Heenan was on there once. I remember that. Um, figure it out with Summer Sanders. What a smoke show. As a kid, I had a massive crush on Summer Sanders. I mean, and other things they filmed there. Obviously, my brother and me, they filmed there. They filmed Canadian Kel, like I said. Um, Gullah Gullah Island. Clarissa Explains It All was filmed in Nickelodeon Studios. So, I mean, you had so much content that was being filmed there. And in Wienerville, all of that, the first couple seasons were there. Um, and even Allegra's Window, the Zootabigas, and Mr. Riff. Uh, I remember that as a kid, but I didn't know they filmed it there. But this is this is with the greatness of Nickelodeon Studios, just like how everyone talked about it, and how it was a major focal point in the 90s. And, 
that, that's the great now you look at Nickelodeon and Animation Studios and the other Nickelodeons you never hear anything about it you never hear anything cool like they're doing there and they didn't hype it up they didn't build the hype they didn't make people want to visit um, I guess there's a sign of the times man a, a destination another example of why Nickelodeon ruled just the hype job the overall hype job of uh of, of everything and that's what nickelodeon studios was they did so much there they did a great hype for kids to want to visit and do tours when you go to universal studios and it was worth it and uh that's a peak of the 90s for me a peak of the 90s so i just want to talk about that for a few minutes talk about my history there and my brother getting slimed <laughs> and <laughs> he didn't get slimed in his nickelodeon shirt by the way you don't want to ruin the branding gimmick uh they put him in a uh like a i guess like a slime suit or whatever and then you know <laughs> it's one of my favorite childhood memories uh with me and my middle brother i can't forget that stuff but um with that being said we're coming up on the final episode tomorrow of unfiltered where we discuss the nickelodeon revolution the branding uh the things that they've done over the years and just how it transcended a revolution of kids into being treated like actual people, not as idiots. But with that said, this is Unfiltered. I'm John Harder. HardwayHQ.com.